The Black Phone is a good movie. Let's talk about why. Hey guys, I'm Carl. Welcome to my movie film show. Feel free to subscribe down below if you would like to. But today we're here to talk about The Black Phone. What a title that is. Overall, Hollywood needs to start working on their movie titles because some of the titles this year be kind of sketchy, especially in horror movies. Black Phone, Smile. We can do better, Hollywood. Make something a little more exciting with the titles. I'm going to call this video The Black Phone brackets review aren't they so hmm. but the black phone is a movie which came out in the summer and i didn't watch it because i wasn't that interested in it to be honest but i've heard very good things about it and i've in particular seen a lot of the imagery in particular the mask that ethan hawk wears and it did pique my interest so now with wakanda forever being the big release this week and my interest in the mcu being at an all-time low i decided to take this opportunity to catch up on some movies which i missed earlier in the year and put out the reviews for those now because why not? So The Black Phone was high on my list of movies to check out before the end of the year. And I'm glad I did because I really enjoyed the movie. I knew it was a horror movie. I didn't know what sort of horror movie. I didn't know too much about the movie going into it at all. And I'll be honest, I expected more blood and guts and gore. And while it does have a little bit of it, I was very surprised how tame it was on a lot of the horror elements. It's more of a thriller, borderline horror movie, I would say. So the movie centers on a young boy who's abducted by a villain known as the Grabber, which in itself has eerie connotations. We see some of his earlier victims, but it's very well done in terms of they just show you a van appear every now and then and you know there's something up. But ultimately our protagonist Finney is the one who's abducted and we see being abducted and what happens to him. Along the way he gets some phone calls from past victims of the grabber from the black phone and Ethan Hawke's character is the one who has him trapped in the basement and comes down and has various interactions with him. However the former victims through the black phone warn Finney of what's to come. So the movie does have a paranormal element to it as well. Finney's young sister as well also has a psychic ability where she sees things through her dreams. Spoiler alert, ultimately helps them find Finney. Now for a horror movie and a movie which was getting a lot of praise earlier in the year, I expected a lot more horror and blood and guts and gore. It doesn't quite have that and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It doesn't have demons and people being ripped apart and all this stuff, but it does have an incredibly creepy vibe to it. And a lot of it isn't true showing you things. It's more letting your mind fill in the gaps of what's possibly going to happen to the kid, especially how creepy Ethan Hawke makes his character. It's a sensational performance from Ethan Hawke. The mask in itself has almost become iconic from this movie already. Ethan Hawke even sporting it for Halloween. The movie had a lot of intrigue to it, a really good soundtrack to it, and it kept you engaged all the way through. The movie was an hour and 40 minutes long and for me I felt the movie flew by. Towards the end of the movie when you could tell the movie was beginning to wrap up I suddenly realized oh crap here comes the end of the movie. It feels like I've only been watching it for about an hour. The movie kept me really engaged, really interested all the way through and with a horror movie I always anticipate that the protagonist isn't going to get away. They're going to meet an untimely demise so I was constantly guessing what was going to happen. Was Finney going to be able to escape? Were they going to find him in time? Or was the killer going to get his way? Now, spoiler alert here, there is a big misdirect at the end. This is sister's dreams result in her finding a house and alerting to police and the police of course just go okay well this girl has dreams about where the kid is so we're definitely going to go to that place without hesitation they jump in their cars they drive to exactly where the kid says they end up in this house and the house is completely empty but it's done very well on screen it's a very almost cliche thing of the police ending up in the wrong house but the build up to it was very well done where it looks like they're about to breach the house right at the time when Ethan Hawke's character goes after the kid they build up that suspense really well so while the movie could have been scarier over Overall, it's a very entertaining movie with some fantastic performances in it. Ethan Hawke in particular is fantastic. He just plays a creepy guy phenomenally. Where he gets that experience from? Who knows? The movie currently has an 83% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and an 88% audience score, which is a pretty damn good indication it's a decent little movie to check out. It's not the greatest movie I've ever seen. It's not the best horror movie you're ever going to see, but it's a very enjoyable movie. So ultimately, we get down to a rating out of 10 for the black phone and i'd give it an 8 out of 10 as i mentioned very entertaining it flies by at an electric pace great villain great acting i'd highly recommend checking it out on your next movie night if you've got a recommendation for a movie i've missed this year that i should check out let me know in the comment section below this is the second movie this year that ethan hawk has been in that's been one of my favorite movies of the year with the last one being the north man which you can check out my review for that right over here and if you've already seen that review there's a new video to check out right over here to check out check out saying check out a lot